Hello everyone and welcome to a quick episode of my career let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.1 and in this video I'm going to talk about Kerbal Engineer and Kerbal Alarm Clock. Kerbal Engineer and Kerbal Alarm Clock will be the first two mods that we add into the game and there's a good reason for that. Kerbal Engineer gives you a lot of valuable information that can help you out especially helping you to calculate your delta V. Uh, which you would otherwise have to do by hand with the rocket equation. But I am going to, in this video, talk about the rocket equation as well, because it's a good time to introduce it, and just because you have Kerbal Engineer does not excuse you from knowing the rocket equation, because occasionally Kerbal Engineer will make mistakes. And it's important to note, you know, does the number look right? Does it seem like it's the right number? And uh, let's actually expand Kerbal Engineer a bit here. Uh, it's got a lot of information, cost, mass, ISP, thrust, but a lot of this information you would get just by knowing which engine you're using, unless uh, you have a really complicated stage, which you'll eventually do. Our most important information really is the thrust, thrust weight ratio, the delta V, maybe the burn time, but ma mainly these two. And so compact mode gives us those two and it shows us in each stage. Atmo is the sea level values. And if you click Atmo off, it gives you the vacuum values. Now, I didn't really spell out the, the rocket equation very clearly previously. And so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go into monitor capture mode. And I'm going to write it out for you so that it is nice and clear. Uh, delta V, which is the amount that you can change your velocity, the most important value as far as space travel is concerned, is equal to 9.81. And you'll sometimes see this uh, written as G naught. Um, in any case, the only value you should use here is 9.81 or uh, some value of the surface gravity of Earth, regardless of what planet or anything else you're around. If you're on the moon, the gravity is different. This number does not change. Okay, this is 9.81 no matter what or uh, it could be 9.805 or some you know less approximate num value here but in any case it's actually a conversion factor it is not it is not actually gravity it's just meant to convert the normal um, the normal units for the uh, it's actually the exhaust velocity it's actually the units for the velocity coming out of the nozzle and so this combined is called the exhaust velocity. So uh, I'm using a mouse here, so the writing might be a little bit sop sloppy. But that's the exhaust velocity. And of course, exhaust velocity is measured in different units in different places because uh, traditionally in American literature, it's uh, feet per second. And actually here, uh, you would then have to use 32. But just never, never use anything but metric, please. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, what it allows is this number, as long as you get the right value of it for the units you're using, uh, will allow this number not to change. So this number is always measured in seconds, and that is the number that you see here. In Kerbal Space Program, you're always using metric, and so this number will always be 9.81. So the ISP is number, as you see here, different in sea level and in vacuum, and uh, I always opt for the vacuum value because, as I demonstrated in an earlier video, uh, we get to the vacuum value pretty darn quickly. The sea level value, um, hopefully you do not linger around sea level too long so that you have to deal with that value uh, too much. Okay, now the next bit is multiplied by the ln, which is the natural logarithm. It is the inverse, is the opposite of e to the whatever. So e to the whatever is the opposite of this. And so if you have e to the first power, then ln of e to the first power, ln of e to the first power is 1. ln of e to the second power is 2, and so forth. That's how logarithms work. A logarithm just gives you the exponent. So if you had a log base 2 instead, ln is log base e. That's what that is, log base e. Log base 2 of 2 to the third power is 3. It just uh, throws out that number up there is basically what it is, as long as this number matches that number. That's uh, all the explanation of logarithms I'm going to give you. So, yeah. 
But natural logarithm relates to the natural number, which is e. Why is that the natural number? Uh, that's that's calculus stuff. I, uh, yeah. Let's let's just leave that be for now. Uh, it does have to do with how things decay and how things grow, and it is a very useful number. And in this case, it's the decay, natural decay of your fuel in your tank, if you will. Okay, so ln and the actual value that goes here is your full mass, uh, mass with fuel, mass with fuel over your mass without fuel, mass no fuel. Oh, that looks like minus. So if we take a look at the first stage here, let's just uh, put in numbers. We have four uh, two-ton tanks, so eight tons total. If we take a look at our total mass, well, this is the total mass for the entire rocket, but when we calculate the mass uh, without fuel, it includes the entire upper stage. So we do use this number. Uh, for the upper stage, we'll have to use the total mass without the first stage because we've dumped that off. But to get the delta V of the first stage, we do use the entire rocket's mass. And so that's 17 point, so up here it's 17.7 nine eight and since we have eight tons of fuel here we can subtract eight out of that and we will get nine point seven nine eight and so if we do the ln of that and we've got the vacuum number here so let me get my calculator out and because we have to get this natural logarithm thing that's generally not something you can do in your head um, except if you have the value, uh, so if it's e to the 1, that happens to be 2.71. And so if you know that this number happens to be really close to 2.71, you can fudge it. And uh, so if this happens to be 2.71, uh, then the ln of 2.71 is just 1. And then you get the exhaust velocity, which if you recall is the ideal situation. Um, I said that uh, the fuel mass should be double the empty mass, in which case that would make this number 3 because uh, the mass with fuel is the 1 plus the 2 and the mass without fuel is just the 1 so 3 over 1 is 3. ln of 3 is pretty close to e to the first power and so that's pretty close to the exhaust velocity but the ideal is actually if this number is equal to that. Um, but let's calculate what it really is for the first stage 17.798 divided by 9.798. That's 1.8 here. And if we take the ln of that, we get 0 0.56, uh, 596, or 0 0.597. And then to multiply, the ISP of this engine, the Reliant engine, is 310. And then we multiply by 9.81. And we get 1015, which is exactly what Kerbal Engineer is telling us. So as a sanity check for you is if, if you think that this number is greater than uh, 3, the, the number, the amount of delta V you should have out of the stage should certainly be a number greater than the ISP times 10, let's say, to round it off. So since the ISP of this is 3, 000, uh, 310, then if this number is more than 3, then the total delta V is definitely 3,100 or greater. And you can sort of use estimates like that, and so I use that on the fly. Now I had to go into monitor capture in order to get the epic pen, which is how I drew all this. And we we're going to make that disappear in a sec, so if you didn't get it, uh, please do get it now, and it's gone. Alright, so let me clear off my screen. I can still see everything. Okay, so do you have to do all that? No. Uh, you can use Kerbal Engineer Redux. There are multiple versions of it right now. Officially, it is an update for 1.4. There is a fork of it, which means that some other modder is, has decided to make an update for it that isn't official, but there will eventually be an official update for it. So I'll link the unofficial update, but it's possible. I think some people are using just the 1.3 version just fine, but I'm not sure. So, yeah, uh, so I'll do the calculation for you and you don't have to worry about it unless you've got an interesting staging situation, in which case it might be lying to you. So it's good to have sort of a sense of things. Also, Atmo. Of course, some engines are not 
made for the atmosphere. For instance, the Terrier engine has a ridiculous 85 second ISP in Atmo. That's why here it shows only 763 meters per second and a horrible thrust to weight ratio because it's only got 16 kilonewtons in atmosphere. But if we go into vacuum, it's got a healthier delta V 3000 and you know that's close to its optimal. Uh, optimal will be 3450, but of course we have to have the little lander stage, so we have to make allowances. And uh, also we have to make allowances because if we put any more fuel on the stage, it'd be overburdened because of the thrust to weight ratio. It's already at 0.81 in vacuum, which is not great. It, it does uh, cause a bit of a problem. And for an upper stage, you can get away with that. But obviously with a launch stage, you better be able to get off the ground. So the uh, for the atmosphere, what you're mainly looking at is the thrust to weight ratio on the bottom. This one, stage three and that's 1.17, that can get off the ground. If it's less than one, it's not going to get off the ground. And so, yeah, that's why, by the way, we use the Reliant engine. Obviously, if we use the nice gimbling swivel engine, put that on the bottom here, and I go to Atmo, 0.95. <laughs> well, that's not going to get off the ground. And also, let's take a look at the Delta Vs. Uh, the vacuum Delta V, I always like to use the vacuum for the Delta V, 1,838. Okay, let's put the Reliant engine on. 1,815. So the swivel engine only has 23 extra meters per second of delta V in uh, vacuum. So if we did take off enough fuel to make sure that this goes up, uh, we would probably have less delta V out of this stage than we do using the Reliant engine. So that's why we use the Reliant engine. Um, yeah, that was an obvious choice. And this is what Kerbal Engineer allows you to do. It makes it gives you possibilities to analyze your craft in detail so that you can make good choices as far as what you build. But that's not all it does. By default, Kerbal Engineer requires you to put parts on your vessel. And you'll note I haven't actually put a Kerbal Engineer part because I didn't want modded parts in this install. Instead, I used a uh, module manager script. So you'll need mod module manager for this, but my module manager script places this Kerbal Engineer thing on all of the little probe cores. Anything with a command module uh, then gets uh, this little Kerbal Engineer dialog. If we go outside though, we see that we have this dialog. Now, if you're in the middle of a career mode with the tech tree, I think the whether this shows up is a little bit more complicated because uh, Kerbal Engineer functions unlock with tech tree nodes and stuff like that. So if you're not getting this, that might be the reason. And uh, sometimes I think uh, it's visible with crewed vessels and not with probe cores. I've had that happen before. Not entirely sure, but the idea is uh, you don't even need this up. You can just click this icon here to hide stuff. Uh, show engineer. Nope. But it has this information up here, and actually let's move this over. So this HUD one is that one. I wonder if we can, oh yes, edit. We can move that, and I would like to edit this one so it's moved a little bit there. But now we've got the very important information, and let's hide engineer here, of the apoapsis height, the periapsis height, time to apoapsis, time to periapsis. And we also have the altitude of terrain, vertical speed, horizontal speed, and biome. Mach number, uh, not so important uh, usually, but yeah, this negates the need to constantly turn to the map view to see these numbers, which is manifestly helpful. There is no situation in which you really think that it's more legitimate to turn to map view to find out this information. So why it's not always displayed is beyond me. Um, if you say that a Kerbal Space Program is about flying by the sea of your pants, turning to map view in order to figure out this information does not help you fly by the sea of your pants, obviously. So, yeah, I mean, this, I think, I'll, I, I don't want to speak for anybody else, so I'll just say I think it should have just been default information that was an option to be displayed in settings and uh, so that people could fly more enjoyably. And you don't need all of all of this necessarily, but if you did want to keep track of your delta v, it's here. Uh, this 
is largely duplicative of that except for inclination. So you could just focus on your vessel information. And actually this has a lot of additional information like the suicide burn countdown for landings. And uh, actually probably a little bit more information than you need. So you can always edit it and delete stuff. So you can remove the information if you think it's too cluttery. For instance, I really don't care about my thrust offset angle or my thrust torque or um, I'll keep the thrust to weight ratios I suppose um, acceleration um, not really uh, intake air usage not for now but maybe we'll keep that for airplanes later on so you get the idea this is obviously very helpful and so we're going to be adding it in and yeah, then you can see more of the information. I'll just be smoother to look at things. All right, so the other mod I want to talk about is Kerbal Alarm Clock, which is right here. Very convenient. And Kerbal Alarm Clock allows you to keep track of many missions if you're launching more than one, and you don't want to follow it all the way out. Because if you take a look at map view, if you've got a probe that's heading out to, say, Jewel over here, all the way out here, well, it's going to take some time to get there. And it might be that the proper time to transfer to a different planet occurs while another mission is taking place. Well, you can just set an alarm for when the Jewel probe reaches Jewel, so that you don't have to worry about it along the way, you don't have to follow it all the way out, and you can take care of your other missions at the same time. But, you might be asking at this point, wait, how do I know when it's the right time to go somewhere? Ah, well, Curve Alarm Clock provides this Transfer Window Planner. Transfer Window Planner, it asks for the parent, which in this case for planetary transfers is the Sun, the Transfer Origin, Kerbin, and Moho is the innermost. So let's, let's add an alarm for that. Those alarms, uh, for Moho it occurs most often. Eve, Duna, Drez, Jewel. I get the feeling I'm on 24 hour and Earth days. I think I'm on 24 hour uh, clock and earth days, so these numbers will be drastically different for you. And finally, Elu. So these are the plants that we can transfer to and when we can transfer to them. Um, actually, we've got some settings here. We can select calendar, Kerbal stock calendar, earth calendar, well, uh, but that does not change the fact that in our settings, we probably have the wrong time scale, but I think I can only change that in the front menu and not here. So, and that's because I imported my settings file from uh, save where I was doing stuff around Earth instead of Kerbin. But anyway, now we know when we can transfer. This is uh, based on an approximation though. It's uh, based on an approximation that all the orbits are flat, okay, and circular. So if you want a more precise idea of exactly when to go to a different planet and also how much it's going to cost because this isn't telling you how much it's going to cost to get there uh, there is a mod called transfer window planner that can help you with that but for now this is sufficient for me and we'll talk about how much it costs and all that if you want to know how to calculate this I can get into that in some detail in a different video for now that's beyond us um, and it's because of the approximation even if you could calculate it by hand using an approximation, phase angle approximation, uh, that wouldn't be good enough because orbits are lopsided. Like Moho's orbit is severely lopsided. You can see it's much closer to the sun on this side than on that side. So this number isn't very precise anyway. And uh, same thing with Elu's orbit out here. Elu also has the added problem of being severely inclined, as is Drez. So it's not flat with respect to the rest of the system. So that causes complications which will make these not entirely accurate and trying to c calculate that out it's best to be left to a computer and that's what Transfer Window Planner does for you. It actually calculates it, man uh, you know, uh, at some point I'll show you exactly how that works but for now it's a good idea to get a hang of making the transfers without uh, the additional tools and having an approximate idea of how much it costs just in your head so that you can plan for that. And also know when Transit Window Planner is giving you 
uh, a transfer that isn't optimal. So I tried to make this quick. This is just introducing these two mods and there's a lot more to talk about for each of them. They have many more functions like uh, Kerbal Engineer has this heat stuff and uh, you can get other information but I'm going to leave that for now. I just want to uh, throw these in and in the next video we'll start uh, using them in practice. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.